What is up YouTube? In this video, we will look at the big data tech stack you need to learn in 2023. Someone who's new to the field of data engineering, doing, uh, reading a lot of blogs, especially related to big data engineering, or someone who's like a seasoned data engineer has, would have definitely seen this image, which kind of shows uh, all the big data, open source big data technologies in place for you to use. In a first glance, for a newbie, it's kind of really overwhelming. Uh, and it is not an actual depictor of the current landscape. The field of big data engineering is rapidly evolving, especially with the cloud players coming into place, providing these different managed services, which are very easy to use. So yeah, stay tuned till the end of the video to gain this insight. All right, before we move forward into the tech stack, let's look into distributed systems and how they are trying to solve all these problems. So basically distributed system came in with the advent of Hadoop, so Hadoop kind of was one of the first uh, technology that was available to manage big data sets in terms of using distributed system. So what happens is instead of using a single machine, uh, which has single memory or single in-house device, it uses a cluster of machines. It has a, a master node and worker nodes, which kind of distributes all the workload. Hadoop basically introduced these two concepts within the space of distributed systems, uh, which is kind of standard now for any other processing um, uh, framework you're using like be it spark or whatnot so in this space they introduce two main concepts which we you need to know about for any big data engineering the first one is distributed file systems so how to kind of in introduce sgfs so how to distributed file systems so instead of storing data in a single machine it basically partitions partitions the data on specific values and stores it into like multiple places so this way the data not only resides in a single place but it is also into like multiple machines. Uh, a lot of the times copies of this data is also being kept into multiple machines so that it makes things fall transparent. For example, if one of the machines fail, the data is still there in some other machine that can be brought over back. Cloud companies came up with object storages such as S3 and cloud storages. Uh, lately, and, and that's what we're gonna discuss it further lately, these HDFSs, uh, especially when you're using cloud, have been replaced by this uh, globally available object storage such as uh, Google Cloud Storage, S3, Azure Blob Storage. So they kind of uh, replace this fact. And another added advantage is like they kind of separate the compute from the storage. Uh, previously in Hadoop, there were machines which, which were kind of storing your data. Uh, but now the storage is layer is kind of separate within cloud and then the compute can be separate and be closed. So now that we understand the distributed file storage, the second concept you need to understand is MapReduce. So basically what, what happens is when there's a big chunk of task for any data processing engine, uh, and it, al it also started with Hadoop, Hadoop kind of introduced this concept of MapReduce, where it kind of breaks your task into multiple smaller tasks and assigns it to each workers, basically called the map stage. It processes those in independently, like the smaller subsets of data, and then it reduces back the, uh, when you're trying to aggregate the data or when you're managing the data or saving the data, it joins it back. All right, now I'm sharing my screen and let's start building a realistic big data tech stack you need to learn for 2023. Yep, let's go back to this diagram and see where we are kind of coming from, right? In this diagram, we see all the open source Hadoop components such as uh, HDFS, uh, MapReduce, uh, and then we can see some, something related to Spark, something related to streaming. These kind of different tech kind of exist in different spaces of big data engineering. For example, Kafka is like a messaging bus where you kind of get the streaming data in. So in different projects, different kind of technologies are being used. Uh, if you're thinking that a single project would kind of, uh, uh, is kind of using all of this together is, is kind of very rare, I would say. Uh, projects are kind of segregated in terms of scope. But so yeah, uh, let's start from here. Let's start from this and let's try to build a simpler uh, tech stack. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna, uh, lay out my thought process of what kind of things are being involved, right? So the first thing that is involved is storage, right? HDFS was kind of important when Hadoop was there, but lately with, with cloud technologies, especially when you're working with cloud, it's not as important. So one of the more important things is object storage, where all your big data sets kind of go in. Uh, it's not as expensive, object storage. It includes uh, S3, uh, GCS, Azure or Blob Storage. These cloud cloud providers are kind of working independently. Or and like in case of data bricks, there's also DBFS. So that's the first thing uh, is which is important because big data set you need to store them somewhere. Uh, the cost uh, the cost isn't very high. So let me add a small note and say uh, object storages are usually cheap at big data scale. 
Uh, if you want to look up, you can look into each of them. The cost, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be very high. So yeah, uh, this, these, these kind of tech is important. And this is my experience. In your experience, it could be a bit different. The overall concept will be the same. Like you need a storage layer, right? That's the first uh, thing. The second thing you need is uh, a data processing engine. Uh, so this is a data processing engine. This the, realistically, it used to be uh, Hadoop where it, everything was used to process, but lately Spark has overtaken the throne. Uh, Spark is much more than just a processing engine. It has like ML lib, streaming and whatnot. But Spark actually comes up with like multiple things, it's actually much faster than Hadoop. Uh, if the data is huge, you end up writing a Spark job. It can be a PySpark job. It can be a Spark SQL job that runs on Hive and whatnot. But essentially Spark is kind of the core of a processing engine nowadays. So you just need to learn Spark. So within Spark, there are a few things you need to learn about PySpark because that's the, uh, uh, you can use Spark on Python and Scala. PySpark is kind of the easiest. So I'm just going to name PySpark. Uh, and lately this is the mostly used version of Spark. So th this allows you to write Python code. Uh, a lot of the times the code is similar to Pandas, uh, so it's not very hard. Another is Spark SQL. So uh, basically Spark kind of comes up with the SQL API. PySpark essentially uses the Spark SQL API to run it internally. Uh, but essentially the idea is that you can write simple SQL queries to transform the data at scale using Spark. Basically it standardizes the process of writing your jobs or processes. I'm going to write one more, which is Spark streaming. So when the data is coming in, um, in real time from a, usually a messaging bus, right? Uh, it can be an AWS messaging bus or it can be Kafka or a GCS messaging bus. Kafka is like an open source version of a messaging bus. So that's where the data kind of comes from. Uh, so, and once, when the data is uh, kind of streaming, Spark streaming kind of comes into the picture, uh, analyze the data in near real time. So the way it happens is it uses thing called windowing, which, and this is also an in important concept to, to learn. So basically you're, you're applying windows of like data sets. So you're just uh, looking at like smaller frames of data instead of looking everything together, right? Because the data is coming like one by one. So just look into a window, analyze it, aggregate it to transform it and just uh, present it back to usually it's a dashboard. So that's how you do like the streaming operations for processing after the processing engine. So do you use these libraries to kind of uh, transform the data, but this library is usually run somewhere on a cluster, right? It usually is a cluster of machines, right? So that's what we call it. Uh, we call the cluster tech, right? So this is where uh, the cluster tech is important or uh, comes into place. Uh, it can be a, a manual installation of a Hadoop cluster usually different teams do it so yeah this is one of the options uh, which was used in the past but lately cloud options have overtaken from this and they're like uh, a lot of these there are managed services which you can directly use so one of the uh, example of a managed service would be aws's emr so it allows you to kind of uh, spin up clusters which are managed so you don't have to worry about like the configuration of the cluster how the cluster is running how they're interacting how the master is communicating with the worker nodes uh, installation of yarn so you don't have to worry about that uh, all of these kind of get pre-configured uh, with these cloud options such as e aws e emr i want to do a manage cluster and then the ews uh, comes under manage uh, emr right and then there is another um, uh, gcp data proc right uh, which is also very similar to emr it gives you a managed space of clusters basically run your jobs like spark jobs or hadoop jobs usually it's spark jobs like that's my experience has been another is databricks uh, so databricks uh, gives you a platform to run your clusters essentially it runs it for you uh, they run it on your native cloud environment if you're using aws it runs on aws or maybe Azure. Uh, all right, I was looking into uh, what's uh, what's the available option in Azure and it's called Azure HD Insights. So basically it's, it's a counterpart of like uh, AWS EMR data proc. So basically it allows you to run Spark or Hadoop jobs uh, within like a managed cluster. So this is like the managed space. Uh, there could be more, but let's cover, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it to this. Uh, this is the, these are the ones that I've kind of used. I've used Databricks, GCP data proc, EMR. And I've looked into HD Insights, which is also available in Azure, right? And then there's an another cloud option is uh, not managed. So another uh, cloud option is like Kubernetes. 
so gke so kubernetes within kubernetes they like there are multiple options like for google is gke for uh, azure there could be something else but let's keep it gke for now so so yeah, let's just keep kubernetes for now but uh, every cloud provider would have their own version of like managed kubernetes service uh, uh you can create kubernetes cluster and kind of run your spark jobs there so so yeah these are the main ones uh, you should be concerned about and these are the options which are usually there and for streaming i would say another important concept is uh, uh messaging bus so look into kafka uh kafka so yeah these these are the kind of technologies which are important for becoming a big data engineer and th this is like the big data tech stack that is kind of required for you to run a big data processing jobs right uh, a few key things to note is like the languages you need to be proficient with be uh languages is uh, first of all is python right and the second is sql so you need to be like super proficient with like running python running sql looking into tables looking into columns and under understanding columns because uh, one of the key roles for you is actually understanding the business logic implementing the business logic Uh, having the right transformation it's less about tech but it's more about driving value so that's where your proficiency with using sql and python comes into place uh, uh because you need to kind of uh, write all of code in within this and it, the code needs to be efficient as well and uh, yeah so with python also like pyspark right because python pyspark is based on python so i'm just keeping it here another thing you need to uh, uh that is important maybe that comes later is uh spark or yarn configuration uh i'm not going to cover this maybe this needs a a separate video on its own but uh, one of the other things is important is to run all these jobs effectively and efficiently so as a big data engineer you're also like important uh, you're kind of also responsible to set these configuration of parameters in the right way so so the the resources are utilized in a proper way right um uh, uh so the pipelines are efficient and effective and all the resources of the cluster are being utilized so that's the key idea of setting up this pack configuration i think this needs a dedicated video on, on its own uh, uh as it's a, like a, a proper process and uh, the way you kind of need to configure yeah so uh, another the big data tech stack which is also very important is uh, airflow so orchestration so for orchestration you need to orchestrate all these jobs you run them on cluster you run them somewhere else but you need to like run this on a specific time you can do cron jobs but uh, airflow is uh, is now the standard these days uh, they come up with the latest version 2.0 uh, the interface is much better and everything is much more organized but airflow is kind of standard in this place so you need to learn this uh, uh, airflow tech and how to inst uh, install uh, if not inst if it's already installed you need to know how to use it like how to create tag right uh, yeah which is also written in python so this is also another thing you need to keep in mind so yeah this is about it for the big data tech stack you need to learn in 2023 uh so yeah let me know in the comments if this is useful also let me know if you want to add something to the list uh if you want to if i kind of miss something out so definitely let me know if there's something you need to add or subtract uh if you gain value out of this video definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel uh, it really helps me a lot to boost my channel to other people like you so yeah that's uh that's about it thanks a lot for watching see you in the next one